All right, guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm just gonna run through how to calculate circuit efficiency. So we've got a word problem here. It says a five horsepower motor is drawing two amps. Each conductor has four ohms of resistance and the motor uh, has an additional 350 watts of internal losses. So what is the circuit efficiency? So there's a lot going on with this problem. It's given us horsepowers, uh, ohms, amps, watts, like it's all mixed up. So I think usually in this kind of word problem situation, the best thing to do is draw a picture. So this is what our circuit is going to look like. It didn't give us a source voltage, but it did give us a total current. So we've got the current of two amps here. Uh, we've got our two wires going out to our load, basically completing the loop back to the source. Uh, each line is four ohms as given in the problem. And we've got a motor here of five horsepower. We know that there's going to be two amps flowing through it. It's a series circuit. There's gonna be two amps flowing through everything. And uh, we also know here that there's 350 watts um, of, of losses as well. This is internal losses. This is things, um, for example, just like bearing friction, heat, windage losses stuff like iron loss which is like a mixture of hysteresis and eddy currents like all things you'll learn about if you're going to study this topic uh, further um, but basically there's losses that's all you need to know and what we want to do is we want to find the efficiencies so the formula for efficiency here is our output divided by our input times 100 percent and for circuit problems like this where we have one circuit driving one motor or something like that um, the output is going to basically always be our rating in horsepower or watts depending on which unit it's given it'll be like the motor rating or the pump rating and the input is going to be a combination of the output plus the losses in the circuit now horsepower is kind of an annoying unit to work with we're going to be wanting to work in watts so the first thing that we want to do is convert our horsepower to watts for our output so we know we have five horsepower we're going to multiply that by the ratio uh, the unity ratio where we have horsepower to watts so that ratio is 746 watts to one horsepower Basically, when you see horsepower, you can just multiply it by 746. These units are going to cancel out, and we're going to be left with 3,730 watts. So this is our output. And this is basically going to be the numerator in our efficiency calculation. Now, we need to find our losses. We know for sure that there's 350 watts of losses coming from the motor itself, but there's going to be line losses as well from the resistance of the conductors which are supplying it. And we've identified here that each conductor has four ohms of resistance. There isn't actually a resistor in line. It's just this actual conductor has some amount of resistance in real life. And whatever the length of it is and the cross-sectional area and the material, uh, they've figured out in this problem that it's going to be four ohms on each line. So we need to take that uh, resistance and we need to convert it and we need to figure out what the power loss is going to be due to the current as well. So we're going to use one of our power formulas and that's going to be P power is equal to I squared R. And uh, we have the current, it's two amps. So we're going to square the current and we're going to multiply it by the resistance, which is four ohms. And uh, 2 squared times 4 is equal to 16 watts. Now this is for each conductor. So let's just lay out our output losses and input here. So our output we've already calculated here. It's 3,730 watts. Now our losses was the 350 from the motor itself. That's watts plus 16 watts for the first conductor, plus another 16 watts for the second conductor. And we're gonna get a total amount of losses in this circuit uh, at 382 watts in total. Then our input is going to be equal to our output plus our losses. So that's going to be 37, 30 watts plus 382 watts so our total input to the circuit is going to be 4102 watts so we can plug this into our efficiency equation to solve for efficiency and remember that was the output divided by the input times 100 percent 
Okay. If you like dealing with fractions, you can forget about the 100% because when we go to expand this or when we go to actually write it out, we have 37, uh, 30 watts over 4,102 watts. Uh, and then we can multiply this by the 100 percent but of course you're probably familiar with this that you're going to see this this fraction here it's going to be equal to 0 0.907 and that is equal to 90.7 percent so if you like multiplying by 100 percent sure go for it but if you just see this 907 then you can just say great that's 90.7 percent so we should probably write that here officially we have a circuit efficiency of 90.7%, which is decent. You know, for every 100 units we put into the circuit, we're getting 90.7 units of work out of that motor. Um, could be worse. But that's how you calculate the circuit efficiency. You have to take into consideration the losses of the motor itself and the losses of the rest of the circuit, usually being the conductors, uh, line losses in the conductors, or if there's something else specified in the problem, then you'll need to, um, to take care of that as well. Um, while we're here, we can actually calculate the motor efficiency as well. And it's going to follow the exact same formula. It's the efficiency is just equal to the output divided by the input. Either just take that fraction and multiply it by 100 in your head or times 100% here. Um, now the output of the motor itself, again, here we're specifically looking at the motor efficiency, not the circuit efficiency. I'll write that up here. So for the motor itself, it's putting out 3730 watts. But for the input to the motor, what's going into the motor is the output of the motor plus the losses of the motor. So it's going to be over 3730 watts plus that 350 watts. You can't consider those 16 watts that are leaving basically in each or getting lost in each conductor to be going into the motor because they're not going in. They're like getting lost in the, the rest of the circuit. You can think of it as that way. So we can just simplify this fraction a little bit. We're gonna have 3730 watts on the top divided by 4080, which is giving us a, a decimal here of 0 0.914 or a, a percentage is 91.4%. So also not bad. Um, but notice here that the motor efficiency is greater than the circuit efficiency. This is always going to happen. If this is smaller than the circuit efficiency, you've done something wrong because the rest of the circuit is also a little bit inefficient and those conductors themselves uh, or other devices in the circuit will also have some inefficiencies built into them and be basically like losing power. Uh, so something to know is your circuit efficiency will always be less than the actual motor efficiency if that circuit is just driving a motor. So something to just be aware of and think about. All right, that's all I got for this video. Hopefully it's helpful and I will see you in the next one.